Oh, oh my, that's, that's, some, oh, that's some truly messed up sh Howdy, y'all, my name is Dandy Jack, and today I'm bringing you another ditty about a passion project by Pam, Pansistaz, Pam, Pans, Pansistaz, this is, World of Horror, a point-and-click style adventure game that's inspired by the wicked art and mind of Junji Ito and Lovecraft's horrid eldritch abominations. This game has you running through nightmares and roguelike scenarios that will leave you curled up in the fetal position, begging for the release of the Great Spiral, the all-consuming perfect shape. World of Horror is literally coined as a love letter to Ito and Lovecraft, and it definitely comes off as such with its 1-2-bit to -bit customization. Immaculate art styles that are unique yet true to the source materials it pays homage to, and incredibly imaginative storylines that stuck with me long after I had settled their mind-rotting tales and buried their psychic scars deep, deep down. There's a story mode in which you get to experience some well-tailored difficulty levels and storylines designed specifically to get your legs stretched out into the hellscape that's being painted before you all while having the looming lighthouse peer down upon every niche mistake you make when you don't know the right clap order or are far too weak to start a fire and suddenly you're under the control of the old god. But sacrifice the guest? No! For shame, Haru! The general structure of World of Horror is you get your character, who has no clue what they're about to be subjected to, and neither do you, frankly, thanks to the roguelike element of each run, and then plow out into semi-randomized stories with multiple endings to chase after. Now, I've played one particular story a few times over, and I haven't figured out how to get all the endings for it, but trying different methods and procedures is half the fun, right? And getting through the story has randomized events as well, so no one playthrough of the spine-chilling story of school scissors is going to feel the same. Even if you know how to take down the big bad of the little story, the variables of your current run might not let you get to that ending. Our even greater threat looms in the tower, locked behind five keys that you acquire by completing the mysteries that beset the town. Every time you complete one, the sleeping old one you're pitted against spices up the difficulty for your little eldritch investigator, sending you a key in your mailbox to show that you're making progress. I've had time-lapsed wizards sent after me, nosy neighbors waking me at 3 in the morning. Hell, I've had all radio and water cut off from the city because the damned Elder God decided he didn't want me to take a bath anymore. As if my life wasn't already difficult enough, I smell like the unwashed masses gathering at my card shop. The random encounters you get between walking between each location can be pretty harrowing in their own right too. Like finding a ghost in a stairwell that I could have clapped and bowed back into the afterlife, but I opted for the real method of beating him to death with the butt of my hammer, but in a spiritual way. Since everything is a point-and-click adventure, the combat system works by clicking through actions that cost time and loading them in a sequence bar. You take your turn, the enemy goes. The basic turn-based stuff, but the UI does make it a little difficult to understand what you're looking at. Though that was much more severe before the most recent update, which has made the UI a lot easier to manage, even adding an option to detail certain tooltips further. Speaking of the UI, the dev truly wants the experience to be customizable, letting you change the bitrate and color scheme of your whole playthrough, and adding pretty heavy mod support which I haven't checked out yet because my experience is as far as clicking subscribe in the Steam Workshop, but the game's got links. Everybody's love links, right? The investigation part of the game can feel really clever at times. Like, one of them pits you in a mansion after your estranged granduncle dies and tells you to come to his wake. The wake wants you to participate in some odd ritual since he was super religious. This isn't weird yet. Except for everyone there is a stranger. Still not weird. And this one chap keeps scratching at his funky tattoo. Yeah, everything's going fine. So the chap with the funky tattoo gives you a book that leads you through the ritual. But hey, guess what? That gets randomized each run too. No worries, you're a professional. You've gotten the bonehead ending already. You got it this time. Clap, clap, bow, easy, done. What's next? Free time? Oh, no. Feast? Okay. Oh. Oh, I see it's people. Hmm. All right, we passed the check. Let's just make sure we don't close out of the game. And we did that. Okay, start over. Oh, we got the same investigation. Let's run through it again. Easy. Clap, bow, whatever. All right, time for the feast. The feast. Okay, light the fireplace instead this time. Okay, that gets randomized too, not just the order. Let's light the fire. And we failed. Okay, let's check on Grandpa. Fuck. Well, I mean, it's not like things are going to turn out like they did last time, right? They did. And that's just one investigation, and it feels fantastic. I still have two endings I need to go back for because I keep getting the one that blows. But then you have other investigations that sort of feel like you're just clicking 
go to location until you find an answer. Like, there's no mistakes to be made other than getting your ass kicked or RNG is coming after you. Not all of them have bosses as far as I can tell, or I keep getting endings that don't give me bosses because the path to that next ending or proper ending is very unclear to me. And maybe that's just a personal opinion, but those specific investigations do seem to be more like filler when compared to the mansion and the Fable Forest investigations, which yes, I did blunder and fail my way through as well, yet another ending I will be chasing down in another playthrough. And luckily the investigations that do lack, paired with the random encounters, feel a lot more whole just because of them. Which I think speaks leaks about the random encounters themselves. Now hear me out, this game is also in early access, which means the potential for 1.0 is quite high, considering what's packed into this little tribute to the old days and god-tier horror authors, who I think would be rather impressed with this little indie. If you like horror, Junji Ito, or just weird as hell roguelikes, World of Horror is definitely worth adding to your library. Which we know is slowly filling with backlogs, but hey, at least you'll have something prepared for Halloween, right? Anyways, thanks for watching. I stream over on twitch.tv slash dandy check and you can check out my gross brain on twitter over here somewhere if i figure out how to hyperlink like a real youtuber later